Hi there, my name is Stephen Doherty and uh, today I'm going to show you how to create a drill down choropleth map in Power BI using the Mapbox visual. The map we're going to try and create is as per the uh, screen here. Uh, it is the uh, 2019 election results for um, uh, the Australian federal election uh, and it shows the states at the upper level, the highest level and uh, you're able to drill down onto the states and show the individual electorates within the state and uh, the parties that have won the uh, electorates. Drill back up to show the state overview or show the lowest level. So usual uh, method for using drill down choropleth is to have an upper level label, layer and which you then drill down to show the next level of uh, data. So before we get into it let's have a look at how the data has been sorted into tables and how the tables are related to each other. So the table relationships uh, is as per this diagram. So we have a state table, uh, which is our upper level uh, uh, layer. And then we have an electorate name table. Uh, and just for uh, the, uh, the coloring purposes of the electorates, we've got party names. Election results um, derived from the Australian uh, Electoral Commission data uh, is showing the, uh, um, the electorate name. Um, the number of votes, the swing, uh, etc, etc. So uh, a state and electorate name uh, what drive the layers of the, uh, the map. So when we have the data set up correctly and we've got our table structure, um, we need to have an idea of what layers we want to create within Mapbox. And as I've indicated before and as we've seen before with uh, this uh, uh, map, we're going to use the state as the upper level and the electorate name uh, as the next level down. So let's have a look at our map shape files and see how we're going to relate state and electorate to the map. So to do that, I use a uh, product called a QGIS, which is a free uh, mapping tool. Uh, free GIS tool that uh, you can download. Uh, very powerful, very good, uh, and uh, it allows you to inspect the shape files that you will use uh, within the Mapbox um, visual. So let's have a look at the layers that uh, I'm going, or layer shape files that I'm going to uh, to use. So they are uh, Esri shape files, and I'm going to add a vector layer going to navigate to where I store it. Let's load the state boundaries first of all and add that to the map. I'll come back here and I'm now going to add the uh, electorate boundaries and add that to the map. And as you can see, we have these layers now added. I can have a look at the tables that make up each of these, uh, these layers by right mouse click and opening the attribute table. And I can see that the state boundaries layer consists of a, a field called the, uh, sorry, a column called the STE name 16, which will be a text value. And if I go over to my state table in Power BI, I can see that I have a state code 16 uh, field um, but it is numeric in nature. And then I have an abbreviated state name column. So this field here in the map is not going to match with this one. So this is text that's numeric. What is going to match though is the state code uh, field, which is numeric. One stands for New South Wales. And in my table, one stands for New South Wales, two Victoria. Sorry, let's get this ordered. 2 Victoria, 3 Queensland, all good. Um, the only problem being that there is uh, only 8 codes in Power BI versus 9 
in the uh, boundary. Um, but to be honest, I'm not interested in the uh, the Ninth Territory. So these are uh, statistical territories uh, created by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Okay, so I'm going to leak the state code, or sorry, the state layer to Power BI through the uh, STE uh, code. Okay, now let's have a look at the electric name table. And here we can see we have a division ID and electric name. So let's have a look at the layer in QGIS, right mouse click, open the attribute table. And we can see the map layer in QGIS uh, is made up of a field which is text and a sort name. Now, I've gone through the start of your force, so um, I'm aware that sort name um, is actually the better field to link with electric name. So electric name and sort name are pretty close to being exact. Um, I did find some differences. There was a uh, electric called uh, Eden Monero, which I can't find now. Let's see Eden Monero there. Um, it had a lower case M uh, in the electoral division, whereas over here, Eden Monero, um, yeah, uh, had was in this format. So that was the only point of difference. So sort name and electric name are going to be the fields that I will link the, uh, acute, uh, the map box map to Power BI. Okay, so we've got our tables and we know how we're going to link. Um, by the way, I should have pointed out that uh, uh, your table in Power BI uh, and your table in your shapefile needs to be a one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, once we've established that, then we're ready to uh, copy or move our shapefiles uh, up into Mapbox. So to do that, we go into our Mapbox account and we go to our tile sets within our um, um, studio uh, menu. So uh, we go to tile sets and here we are going to upload uh, our shapefiles, our Esri shapefiles. So let's select the file and I'm going to move the state boundary up first and confirm. And while that is working, I can select the second file, which is going to be the electric boundaries and confirm that. And Mapbox will copy those files up and convert them to their vector uh, layer format. And I'll come back to you once that's completed. So our shape files have now uploaded into Mapbox and they've been converted into tile sets and they're here. So this is our electoral boundaries and these are our state boundaries. Right, so let's get these tile sets now into the Power BI visual, Mapbox visual. So to do that, we add the visual to the report page and we start off by entering some location data. So our first level is going to be the state and we uh, had already worked out that state code is going to be our linking field and then it's going to be the electric name. And I have some uh, measures up here which I've created um, which look like that. So basically what this does is depending on the level that is uh, selected, it will provide um, the uh, party that has won at the uh, electorate level or when it's at state level, it'll then uh, supply the party that won uh, at the state. So we can um, put that into the color well, um, which are the necessary um, settings for Corapleth map. So the visual is telling us that it requires an access token. You can click on this link here and that will take you to mapbox.com to your account uh, where you can get these details. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it manually. So I come over here to the format page and we have viz settings and here is where the access token goes. So let's go back to mapbox.com and I'll go to my account and I'm going to 
copy the public token and come back to Power BI, enter it in, and I'll keep the light map style. Basically, everything that we uh, need for the visual is now set, uh, apart from the tile set details. So I can collapse that down, GeoCoder I'm not going to touch. Um, this is not going to be a circle map, so I get rid of that, turn it off. Uh, it is going to be a core plethoth map, so I'm going to turn that on. And then we have a look at the subsettings for Cora Pleth. So at this stage, the number of levels is one, and we're dealing with level one, and it is defaulting to United States. Now, obviously, this is a map of Australia, and we want the states of Australia um, level to be displayed. So we click on this, and we come to and click on custom tile sets, uh, and we can see that. The legend has come up, so data is, is getting through to the visual, but what's not happening is the uh, levels are not displaying. So we have to override the default settings that uh, uh, appear. And the first one is the uh, vector tile or the tile set URL. We go back to mapbox.com and we go back to Mapbox Studio and we go to the boundaries tile set and here is the tile set ID or URL. Copy it, paste it. Next is we need to uh, indicate where the layer names are uh, kept. So uh, that is the default value. We're going to copy, over copy the default value with the tile set layer name. Control C. Control V. Now the vector property level is the field name that we're going to uh, take from the tile set, which links to the uh, data. So let's go back to our tile sets details. Uh, and remember with state, we said we would match the state uh, code with the state code number in the uh, uh, tile set. So that's the field we require. Control C, Control V. And we can see the tile set has now linked to the Power BI data. Um, while we're here, let's fix up the colouring. So we'll put Australian Labour Party as red, Liberals blue, others green. Okay, so we've got our first level. Now let's create our drill down level or level two. So we're going to increase the number of levels to two. And we're going to change this to level two. And it defaults back to the United States. And we're going to change that to a custom tile set. And again, we're going to enter in the URL for the tile set, um, the name or the uh, table name and the field name. So let's go back to mapbox.com and we'll go back to our tile sets. And this time we want the electoral boundaries tile set. I'm going to copy that, come back to Power BI and I'm going to copy it in there. The table name, back to Mapbox.com, copy this. Oops, wrong place. And the field name. And remember, we use, we'll use sort name here to make the connection and copy it in there. Now, as long as there's no rendering issues here, we should be able to drill down to the next level. And here we have the individual electorates. So we drill back up and we have the states. So let's select New South Wales 
and let's drill down on New South Wales and there's our electorate. So there you go, that's building a drill down Korra Pleth map in Power BI.